Okay, Dr. Johnson, uh, again here now reviewing a MRI scan of the cervical spine or the neck. Once again, we're going to use the PAC system, the computer-based imaging system that displays the digital data and that gives us an ability to understand uh, the uh, three-dimensional anatomy of the spine and its contents by looking at uh, simultaneous views that are orthogonal or in different planes. So once again, now starting on the left side, we're looking at profile views, uh, also called sagittal views. And if I scroll side to side here, we're scrolling from one side of the neck to the other. And obviously this is a profile of a person's neck. Here we can see the back of the head and the back of the neck. We can see their throat and their chin here. Um, the um, uh, spine is right here. And again, as we saw in the lumbar spine, the larger, lighter areas are the bones, and the spaces between are the discs, which once again are made out of cartilage. The spinal canal is here. Uh, now, within the spinal canal in the cervical spine, we have the solid spinal cord, which is this gray stripe. Uh, up higher, we see how this is the lower part of the brain or the brain stem. Uh, and the spinal cord goes all the way through, uh, which is a difference uh, with the lumbar spine where the spinal cord ends uh, up around L1 or L2. Now on these views, once again, the white that we see surrounding the nerves is spinal fluid, CSF. Uh, now um, it's uh, also the case that if we scroll side to side here, we can see where the nerves leave the spine. Now this is a little harder to see on the in the cervical spine than it is in the lumbar spine because the the foramina or those exit sites do not exit straight out to the side. They're actually angled and it's a little hard for these views to kind of see that. Uh, however, um, we can see it a little better if we go to the to the um, to the other views that we've displayed here on the right. Now on the right are the axial or cross-section views. So this is a series of slices in the horizontal direction uh, and the level is seen by this um, by these yellow lines on the sagittal view. So now each one of these pictures is once again oriented as if the person is laying on their back and we are looking up from the direction of the feet. So this is the back of the neck, front, right side, and left side. These are the neck muscles. Up higher we're seeing the the jaw and the tongue and the uh, and the windpipe here, uh, and so this part here is the spine. Uh, this is the spinal column. Again, it would be the disc or the bone, depending on where that slice hits it. Uh, once again, we see on the back of the spine the joints, uh, which are called facets. Again, and the joint surfaces are these lines and the spinal canal is here. Now uh, within the spinal canal this gray oval is the spinal cord and the white surrounding it is the spinal fluid. Now at every level we can see how a pair of nerves leave the side of the spinal cord and go out through the foramina. Now one other difference between the cervical spine and the lumbar spine is that the nerve roots here basically exit straight out at the same level. Remember in the lumbar spine these nerve roots first travel up into this corner and then wrap around the pedicle and go out into the foramen uh, so they're not going straight out but in the cervical spine they do and we can kind of see that even these these lines here are the nerves so at every level we can we can see the nerves here in fact you can even see that there are two of them there's a uh, dorsal and a ventral root that then combine uh, within the foramen so at any level here we can get a sense for uh, first of all, is there room enough for the spinal cord by looking at the white surrounding it? And if there's anything sort of taking up the water space, then that might be significant. And also, is there anything occupying those foramina that might be pinching the nerves, uh, which would be an explanation for pain in the, the neck, the shoulder, the arm, or numbness or tingling or weakness in those areas. And in this person, at every level, everything looks good. There's nothing pinching the nerves. So once again, we're looking at normal anatomy, and if you'll look at some of our other videos, we'll show some examples of things that can go wrong.